Bro. <laughs> that, for those who've never been up here, that sends just a little bit of a, a chill down your spine. So, and thank you for those, Mike. I appreciate that. You know, paybacks are coming. Somebody wants to know what this is all about. I'll, we'll find out a little bit later on. But so let's sit there for a moment. Um, I do have a praise report, first off, before we get into the sermon this morning. Uh, September 13th of last year was the last time I had a, a episode or a spell where my blood pressure dropped so bad that they could not even get a, a pulse until Wednesday night at 9.30. Wednesday night at 9.30, I started not feeling well. I went in and laid down on our bed, and my pulse kept dropping and dropping and dropping, so low that the blood pressure monitor would not even pick it up. Um, it, did, it did scare Vicki, so she called the ambulance. And uh, long story short, same thing happens every time that happens. Get to the ER, they find nothing wrong. All the tests come back perfect, everything is fine. Go home. I think the doctor's almost getting tired of seeing me there because they think, they tell you to come back if it happens again, but they think I'm just passing out. But it's kind of like what's happening to Pastor Cancer, I guess. But um, at any way, you know, I do have the faith in my Lord. I know what happens, but I hate to see what it does to, to Vicki when that happens, you know, and my family. So, but anyway, praise the Lord for that. He, he heard our prayers, and I'm, I'm, here, I'm still here. Um, I think uh, because what I'm presenting today, I think Satan really wanted to attack our family for that reason. And so with that said, let's open with prayer, please. Father, this morning, we praise your name. We thank you for your goodness and your love for us. We thank you for all that you do, Lord. You're faithful and you're true and you're mighty. Who would not want to serve you, Lord? We thank you. I ask for your blessing today and I ask for your words to be upon my lips that, that you and you only be glorified in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We're entering a time where we're getting ready for the lighter rain. And it's very important that each of us has the faith that will, will stand. I don't know where your faith is at. I know at times, when I first came back into the church, I was afraid of the, the end times because I didn't think I could stand. I was afraid of it. But the Lord will take care of you. I've been titled this morning, Three Days, Will Your Faith Stand? How Will Your Faith Stand? I've been doing a study for several months now. If you, if you do a study in your Bible on three days, you'll find it several times in the Bible. And I thought that was very, very impressive. So I, I, I've counseled with um, Doug Batchelor. I've talked with Eric Fleckinger of It Is Written and several people. And it, it's interesting what was said. I don't know if this is going to work or not, Jared. I might just advance it. There it goes. This is a, a comment from the Spirit of Prophecy that I think everybody should commit to memory. He who is imbued with the Spirit of Christ abides in Christ. The blow that is aimed at him falls upon the Savior who surrounds him with his presence. Whatever comes to him comes from Christ. He has no need to resist evil, for Christ is his defense. Nothing can touch him except by our Lord's permission. And all things that are permitted will work together for good to them that love God. I think Jean mentioned that when she went to academy, she had to memorize that one time. She told me, I think, before. Throughout the history of God's, God's people, great amounts of difficulty, apparently insurmountable, have loomed up before those who were trying to carry out the purposes of heaven. Such obstacles are permitted by the Lord as a test of faith. The exercise of a living faith means an increase of spiritual strength and the development of an unfaltering trust. It is thus that the soul becomes a conquering power. The storm is coming. 
the storm that will try every man's faith of what sort it is. Believers must now be firmly rooted in Christ or else they will be led astray by some phase of error. How about a little story? You want to hear a little story? Eva Wisniewski, she's a German patriot. She's also the paragliding champion in 2005. In 2005, she was in uh, New South Wales practicing for the upcoming championships, her and several other teams from around the world. And this particular day, there were storms in the forecast, but they still wanted to get out and practice before those storms hit. When she did, she soared for a few minutes, and then she got sucked up into an updraft. We have a couple pilots here in the room, and, and I see Jess and I know Lonnie, they're pilots also. And updrafts are not fun to be in. You can be, get caught in them, and you can ascend several, several hundred feet, sometimes thousands of feet at a time, and at the lack of ice, you can get slammed down also through them. But she caught, caught in one of these updrafts, and she could not do anything about it. It sucked her right up into the middle of it. She ascended unbelievably to 31,000 feet. Unbelievable. And everybody, pilots know that FAA says that you, anything over 12,500 feet, pilots have to go on oxygen so they don't get hypoxia. And she went up to 31,000. Of course, she passed out. And it's all documented by her GPS that was, it was documenting the whole flight as she's in. What was even more impressive was her wing, that glider, paraglider she was in, kept flying through the whole thing. As she was going up, she radioed before she lost consciousness that she was lost. She didn't know where she was at. She was ascending at 65 feet per second. And she kept going up and up and up. And she was lightning all around her. It didn't hit her. Thundering. She was getting pummeled by tennis ball-sized hail balls. And she was bruised from it. Up to 31,000 feet, she went, and it's, like I said, it was all documented. 40 feet, oh, 40, excuse me, 40 miles away, they finally found her when she did come back down. But she was, she was so severely frostbitten from being up so high, the temperature was like minus 50 degrees, but she passed out, and they don't know how she survived. It was only miraculous, God's hand. But one of the other teammates from China that was there, he lost his life through the whole thing. He died. He got struck by lightning and died. Her instruments recorded the whole thing. There she is in, in the field, 40 miles away. They tracked her when she came back down. You know, the Bible talks about, you see the frostbite on her hands and her, and her face there and her ears. But the Bible talks about Another story of somebody who took a, a journey to the depths. He went to the depths while she went to the heights. We talk about Jonah. You know the Bible story about Jonah who went down to the bottom of the mountains. Jonah from the belly of the whale cried out to God for three days. And three days is important as we talk about this. And three days is one of, the, one of the numbers that stand out in the Bible. It's one of the perfect numbers that it's written. You have the three, yeah, you have seven and ten. Three meaning. Divine perfection. Seven is spiritual perfection, and ten is ordinal perfection. Of course, I can't imagine Jonah's life or his riding that, in the belly of that whale for three days. And interestingly enough, we're living in a time where God is trying to make people understand his. His word is true. How many people have seen this article in the news just a couple months ago? You saw it? That is a, tour, a dive tour operator from South Africa who got sucked into the mouth of the whale. Just and People didn't think it was possible that he was sucked right in, but he got out. The Bible talks about somebody else who spent three days who is that? Abraham and Isaac. The Bible talks about 
Abraham's great act of faith stands like a pillar of the light, illuminating the pathway of God's servant in all succeeding ages. During that three days journey, Abraham had sufficient time to reason and to doubt God. He might have reasoned that the slaying of his son would cause him to be looked upon as a murderer, a second Cain. It would cause his teaching to be rejected and despised, and thus destroying his power to do good to his fellow men. He might have pleaded that age should excuse him from obedience, but the patriarch did not take refuge in excuses. Abraham was human. His passions and attachments were like ours, but he did not stay to reason with his aching heart. Saul. The faith of Saul was severely tested during the three days of fasting and prayer at the house of Judas while he's in Damascus. He was totally blind and in an utter darkness of mind as to what was required of him. He had been directed to go to Damascus where it would be told him what he was to do. In his uncertainty and distress, he cried earnestly out to God. Esther. The crisis Esther faced demanded quick action, but both she and Mordecai realized that unless God should work in their behalf, their efforts would work be un unavailing. So Esther took time for communion with God. So she directed Mordecai, gathered together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Joseph and Mary. Joseph and Mary were in great perplexity and dis distress. In the departure from Jerusalem, they had lost sight of Jesus, and they knew not that he had tarried behind. There was much confusion as they left the city. On the way, the pleasure of traveling with friends and acquaintances absorbed their attention, and they did not notice his absence until night came on, but now their fears were aroused. They searched for him throughout, throughout their company, but in vain. Shuddering, they remembered how Herod had tried to destroy him in his infancy. Dark forebodings filled their hearts. They bitterly reproached themselves, and by one day's neglect, they lost the Savior. But it cost him three days of anxious search to find him. There's some warnings there. The three days, I, want, I would ask everyone here to go home and earnestly search out the three days. Get out your concordance, search it out. Every item, every time you find three days mentioned in the Bible, there's a different teaching that you need to learn from it. This one here, we can get so absorbed in other things that we lose fo our focus on our, our Lord and Savior. Your faith will be tested, but hold fast, never let go. The hewing, the squaring, the chiseling, chipping off of a sharp point on one side, then on another, the burnishing and polishing, polishing is a trying process. It's hard to be pressed down to the grinding wheel, but the Lord brings forth the stone, and thus prepared it finds its place in the building to emit light as a, light as a living polished stone. The trial, however sharp and disagreeable, will impart a bright luster. The master does no such careful, thorough work upon useless material. Only his jewels are polished after the similitude of a palace. How many have here faced trial since becoming a Christian? I think everybody has. Um, I know Jerry, when he had his little accident there on the bike, I was told that he was in the ER singing hymns and praises while the doctors was working on him. I, I know Bob was, after the fact, we found out Bob was in the ER and had, had his problems there, and I'm sure he was praying also to the doctors, and, well, in, in front of the doctors. And so each one of us have our trials, but how we handle those trials is important. Do we just give up? Do we fear? Or what do we do? Again, from thoughts of mountain blessings, the trials of life are God's workmen to remove the impurities and roughness from our characters. They're hewing, squaring, and chiseling. They're burnishing and polishing as a painful process. It's hard to be pressed down to the grinding wheel, but the stone is brought forth prepared to fill its place in the heavenly temple. Upon no useless material does the master bestow such careful, thorough work. No useless material. If you're suffering trials, be confident that God thinks you're, that you're worth it. Perhaps God works in threes so many times in the Bible so we can see the fingerprint of the triune God and believe he is sovereign, thus trusting him more. Anyone who decides to follow Christ will eventually face test. You may be asked to compromise with the truth of God, which the truth of God reveals in his word. 
Steve can testify to the compromise that UPS would, would ask of us. And he ask, they ask of me also, but neither Steve compromised, neither did I. And God was faithful in his work to bring us through it. Three represents a time of testing. All this comes from uh, study, but not only study, but from the time of uh, talking with Eric Fleckinger, the it is written, and also Doug Batcher of Amazing Facts. They believe the time of testing, and three also is a, is a number which means completion to a degree lesser than seven. And finally, it's God's intervention, how God intervenes in your life at the, at the bottom part of it. 1 Peter 1, verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Believe me, when I'm going through those, those spells that I go through, my blood pressure drops so low, you get to a point where it gets to the point where your body starts to go into shock, is what I'm told. And your, the nausea sets in. I, there's a violent, violent uh, vomiting that occurs. And, but it, the Lord brings you through it. He brought me through it. Trials and problems are not pleasant. When they hit us, they may at first seem terrible, traumatic, and even devastating. But trials are opportunities, opportunities to build faith and grow spiritually. Who was that spoke this morning about? Was it Mark who spoke about opportunities? when we get into trials or things that happen. Is that you, Mark? Okay, my thoughts on I'm not putting you on the spot, but I appreciated that comment. This from Pastor Ted N.C. Wilson. At times, God leads us into difficult or even impossible situations, personally or as the church family, together to build our character and inspire our faith when we see how he arranges our progress through those difficulties. God wants us to remember his interventions in our lives, like the children of Israel at the Jordan crossing to set up landmark memorials. You find that story in Joshua 4, to bring him glory, and not to him and not to ourselves. You think the messengers of God could not be tested, or their faith wouldn't be tested. Ellen White and her husband, when their, when their child was taken down with cholera, we toiled on in Rochester, New York, through much perplexity and discouragement. The cholera visited this town, and while it raged all night long, the carriages bearing the dead were heard rumbling through the streets to Mount Hope Cemetery. The, this disease did not cut down merely the low, but it took away every class in society. The most skillful physicians were laid low and born to Mount Hope. As we passed through the streets in Rochester, at almost every corner we would meet wagons with plain pine coffins in which to put the dead. Our little Edson was attacked, and we carried him to the great physician. The disease was stayed in its progress. I took him in my arms, and in the name of Jesus, rebuked the disease. He felt relief at once, and as his sister commenced praying for the Lord to heal him, the little fellow of three years looked up in astonishment and said, They need not pray any more, for the Lord has healed me. He was very weak, but the disease made no further progress, and he gained no strength. Our faith was still to be tried. For how many days? Three days, he ate nothing, and we had appointments out for two months, reaching from Rochester, New York, to Bangor, Maine. In this journey, we were to perform with our good horse, Charlie, given to us by brother in Vermont, and, and covered carriage. We hardly dared to leave the child in so critical a state, but decided to go unless there was a change for the worse. In two days, we must commence our journey in order to reach the first appointment. We presented the case before the Lord, taking it as evidence that if the child had appetite to eat, we would venture. The first day there was no change for the better. He could not bear the least food. The next day about noon he called broth and it nourished him. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. James 1, 2 and 3. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. But sometimes it is not the words of Scripture that pose the biggest challenge to our faith. 
It is God's silence. The silence of God can be deafening. So what do we do when God is silent? Where do you find strength in these times? Can somebody, where do you find strength in these times? Scriptures. Praise the Lord. I heard the answer. I was looking for scriptures. How many people have scripture committed to memory? At least some. Amen. We should have. We should have because that's our only defense. How did Jesus handle temptation in the desert? It is written. It is written. Satan committed, oh, excuse me. Commit scripture to memory that it may be as a wall of protection about your soul. When Satan comes with these temptations, draw forth the weapon. It is written. When every voice is hushed and in quietness we wait before him, the silence of the soul makes more distinct the voice of God, the desire of ages. How often do we find a faith that won't flounder in fear? It is said that the canary learns to sing in the dark. We also learn a life of faith when we are alone in the quiet often in the dark times. Many of you have faced dark times. I know we all have. And I know especially when we're praying for somebody, especially a family member, to be healed or to come to God, and we just haven't seen that come about yet. In the stillness before God, we learn to wait on Him, even if there's storms all around. From Frank Hassel, the PhD, Longing for God, a prayer and Bible journal. John the Baptist one, none were greater than he, according to Jesus. He faced the trials when he went to the prison, a dark, dungy, rotting cell he was in. He was concerned that Jesus had forgotten him. He, John the Baptist, had always had the companionship of heavenly angels who opened to him the prophecies concerning Christ and the precious promises of Scripture. These were his stay, as they were to be the stay of whose people? God's people through the coming ages. Who said that? <laughs> this is the bucket. Some of you have heard the story. That's, you can get a bucket like this for $2 out at, at Firehouse Subs in Joplin. We've had that one for quite a while. That's a, you've heard the story, but this is a little story about what happened in my three-day period. Uh, that is representative of Vicky. It's also said in scripture, the heart of her husband safely trusts her so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. Amen. Many of you remembered back in 2015 when I was taken down with the uh, fourth nurse, third nurse cranial palsy and the the tremendous pain in, in my eye, in the socket, it felt like somebody was crushing my face. The pain was un unbelievable. My eye went shut, I couldn't open it up, and I was taken to the hospital. The only thing that brought relief from the pain was Spirit of Prophecy talks about soaking your feet in hot water to draw away the blood from the, from the brain. It took away the pain so I could get rest, and that's the only way I could. For three days I didn't, in the hospital, I was left able to sleep, and only pain and carrying on. She carried that bucket through the hallways, <coughs> through the, past the nurse's station, all the way down into my room. People would look at her, but they wouldn't say anything. They were giving me morphine dripped. They were giving me cocktails of painkillers. Nothing was touching the pain. Nothing. Again, the nausea was unbelievable. In the hospital, she brought the bucket to me and I got relief from that pain. That was God leading her to bring it to me. The nurses would walk into that room and they would just look like they didn't see a thing. They just walked past. Didn't have a doctor walk in, but the nurses all walked in. Where did she learn how to, how to do that? From Council on, on the Hill, from the Spirit of Prophecy. Let's go back there. The whole time while I was there, 
in the pain. I couldn't understand. I was praying to the Lord for relief from it, but it just wasn't happening. And I couldn't believe what was happening. Why? It talked about silence, the silence. What was happening? The pain, I couldn't get away from the pain. And finally, as I was watching the, the clock go around, I was starting to think of Jesus on the cross. What he was going through that whole time. His pain for us. And I, could, I was reliving his life. Not his life, but I was thinking about his life. And I think that was part of what I was supposed to be doing. Then came the time when they, the nurses, it came time for the medication for your nausea, trying to, that you could at least be bare the nausea from it. They wouldn't give it to you. They'd take you down to the MRI. How many's had an MRI where they've had their, their head put in them? Okay, in a helmet. They bolt that helmet down over you. They put something in your hand. What do they put in your hand? The panic, panic button. You got it. Okay. You got it. Okay. They put that in my hand. They did both the contrast and without contrast. And I had about five to ten minutes left to go on the, on the whole test. And the nausea was so bad, I was about to vomit inside that MRI. And I hit that panic button. And when I did, the technician brought me out, and I was chastised from one side to the other. She said, you only had five minutes left. Why did you push that button? She got me off the table, put me in a chair, put me out in the hallway. She said, somebody will come get you. As sick as I was, she did that. Now, again, I thought of how Christ was ridiculed on the cross. What happened to him? Not that I'm saying I'm, I'm worthy of what happened to Christ, but I'm just saying his life came back into my mind. You're, you number my wonderings. You, Put my tears in your bottle, or they're not in your book. We'll find when we get to heaven that every time we, we're faced with trials and our tears we, we face, whether it's the loss of a loved one or trials we face, whether illness or whatever it was, or maybe our loved one's not coming to the Lord as we thought they should, those tears are recorded in heaven. Amen. Now, adversity will either leave you better or will either leave you with a greater revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus. You need to decide. When someone is going through a time of trial, you need just to be there for them. <laughs> Don't preach to them, but rather comfort and pray with them, interceding on their behalf before the Lord as a guardian, lifting their soul to the Lord for empowerment to endure the trials which they are going through. You can see that, right? Just be there. You want more? What Ellen White has to say on it? Read that whole passage right there. It, it's incredible. This is typically a scripture that's used at weddings, but I think it has more to do with our, it can be a, a dual purpose of scripture. Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now I'm going to show you a video quick. It can be kind of disturbing, but I tell you, I wouldn't show it to you if it didn't turn out right. So.
one of us in here, we know friends that are going through trials. Do we just walk away from them? Or do we become a part? Do we go to them? Do we help them through their time of trial and, and troubles? Are we with them? Are we praying for them? Because if we're not, we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. God wants us to help because, again, where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst of us. And a cord of three can withstand the evil one. So without our help, that soul which we're trying to protect can actually falter if, if, it, if they find a weak moment. Be a part. Take seriously what God has called us to do. Be a, be a part of it. A lot, of the, a lot of the scriptures and a lot of the spirit of prophecy quotes, that are, you can find them on the website. That's all on the church website also. Thanks to Jerry for putting them up there. Or you can find them here on the church's page right there on the, on the religious resource links. You can also find weekly sermons. If you need to contact us, we can contact us from there also. If you need to watch, you can go back and watch the on YouTube channel, Joppa SDA Church, or even on Facebook. At this time, I would ask everybody to, to again and join me in, a, in one moment of prayer. Father, today, today, and we, the, your, your holy day, Lord, we come to worship you. We thank you for your word, and we, Lord, we know the time is coming where our faith will be severely tested, even worse than it is now. Lord, at the time of trouble, such is coming, that such as never was. And Lord, unless that faith is strong, we won't make it through. And Lord, we know that we must have the faith for that lighter rain to be poured out upon us to reach out to the people you want us to speak to, Lord. Give that final call. Lord, we ask for your outpouring your spirit right now. Father, help us each one. We, we can't say enough, Lord. We just, we need you. We need you every minute of every hour. In Jesus' name we pray. We have the closing song right now.